Is that the English uh, question, sir? I don't know. But um, this is a bit of a, this is a diagram that helps you uh, get started in the Pepper. And if you want to do 2D, you have a whole lot of programs you can use. For drawing, of course, you can you can take a lot of inspiration or even the designs from existing websites. These are four websites you can, you can use. Um, are they uh, related to FabLab Amersfoort or to FabLab in general, or just some uh, sites? This is uh, this is our collection, but the rest is just in general. It's okay. Yeah. This is uh, at the moment from a 3D design company. Yeah. And the idea is that that the round shapes are uh, are free. Um, or Libra, that's the complicated part. Um, the one with the, with the harder edges are just free, like beer free, and the rectangles are commercial. So you have the, the illustrator, that's commercial for example. There are, I didn't list any free uh, programs, but there are a lot of open source as well, like Inkscape. It's quite a good uh, vector drawing program you can use to draw 2D. Google SketchUp would be a free one, right? Because you can use yeah. it for free, but it's not open source. Yeah, right, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, that's uh, but that but that's for 3D. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's listed uh, in the, the 3D stuff. But that's a uh, yeah, oh, good example. Also. Yeah. Um, and all these these programs they can export to a, to a kind of normal um, file like an SVG for vectors, and that you can. Import in Physicut or open in Physicut, and then you can go to LaserCut basically, um, or you can go to uh, an Inkscape plugin and, and use it in the Final Cutter. Yeah, this is kind of an, an overview of, of how you can get from uh, from an idea to the machine or product. Basically, usually it's a, it's a prototype. Of course. That's, that's it for what I can tell. Okay. Like if, you, if you guys have questions. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, I missed it, but can you, um, because uh, oh yeah. when you are going to uh, cut in three dimensions, uh, then I guess you have to. Uh, um, reposition the object uh, by hand. Uh. Yeah. And, and yeah. Um, for example, if I'm going to cut such uh, wood things, um, or uh, yeah, yeah, that's not a good, a good example because those are it's a collection of three two-dimensional. Uh, but I mean, if you if you have For some, example, uh, our toilet roll. Yeah. The yeah, but I see the most the most designs are. Uh, I mean, they are practically two dimensional, in fact. Yeah. But uh, some the are. Uh, do you have examples of objects which, uh, you know, if you would if you would cut uh, slices of hair? Yeah. No, no, no. It's right because if you want to make this, then you you simply cut the, the different parts. So you, because I was I was thinking that you put some wood, and you cut first this way, and and then you uh, change it, and then. Uh, but then, but then but usually the material is too thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what is called two and a half D design. Yeah, yeah. So is, actually, is that? Yeah. So actually, the design is two D. Yeah. Which can easily construct it. Yeah. To the final product being three D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so this is, so that is two and a half dimension. Well, the design is two and a half D, yeah. but the cut is two D. Yeah, yeah. The okay. result is three D. Yeah. And the object is three D. Have you have you never tried to uh, shave 
cheese in two dimensions instead of three to make it so thin that you only have a two-dimensional uh, one-dimensional yeah no no two-dimensional <laughs> you no. get lines right? yeah, that, I, always yeah that, the, I always have the problem that the cutting profiles getting 3d that you do like this mm -hmm. with cheese oh, okay yeah, yeah. Um, now I want to show this, this example, for example the toilet roll holder, this is basically what you, what you cut, the, the, the 2D shape. Yeah, because um, is there... In, uh, in factories where they are cutting uh, pants from, uh, you know, from spiker... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, jeans, then you see that uh, um, the difference between a profitable company and a non-profitable one is how they uh, make use in, a, in the most efficient way of all the jeans uh, fiber. Mm -hmm. Is there something for this or you just have to use your, uh, uh, your uh, sane mind? Yeah, yeah, but they're probably, they are probably there. It's not a problem. There be uh, programs that can do that for you, but uh, I don't know the mission. Yeah, okay. And yeah. actually in, in a lab like this, you're working on one project and it's not yeah. like we're doing huge yeah. shifts yeah. where we have to combine several objects uh, that have to be cut out of, out of the same material. Yeah. So usually it's, it's one uh, design mm -hmm. that's being cut in one sheet of material that's not much larger than the design uh, will fit in. And of course it's a golden design rule to mm -hmm. uh, to do your uh, laser cut yeah. uh, 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 configuration in an efficient way, mm -hmm. not to lose uh, too much material. Mm -hmm. but, but for the skill that we're working in the fab lab, it doesn't yeah. make uh, a lot of sense. It's not a problem. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. optimization yeah. software. And, and getting the last bits out of um, and uh, getting the last bits of wood used out of a panel mm -hmm. takes so much effort. Yeah. yeah. And of course, in, in, in big printers, they do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and if yeah. you do like 10,000, yeah. then it adds up. But if, if you do only one, you can yeah, easily say, well, it's cheaper to waste, for example, half a plate of wood than yeah. to spend a day optimizing. Because what I like uh, uh, so much about uh, 3D printing is that you have the you have generic plastics which you can use to print and if you don't like the object anymore you can melt it and reuse the the grondstof the yeah yeah material yeah so you, you could do that if you uh, cut your object out of the same plastic yeah. sheets then you can melt the waste into a new sheet that's what so we just started doing yeah? with the training uh, a few weeks ago, uh -huh. and, and she has two weeks of uh, internship here, mm -hmm. and she wanted to do something with Cradle to Cradle, mm -hmm. uh, and we have a lot of um, filled 3D prints, mm -hmm. so we have a box full of, well, wasted uh, filament and, and uh, uh, PLA plastic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so there's this little electric oven there, and she did a lot of experimenting in putting all this filament and well, uh, these objects into the oven and see if she could make a flat sheet of plastic material out of that, which can be used in the laser print and the laser cutter too, well, as a, as a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I, I read also about this machine that can chew it all up and then yeah. put it through an extruder to yeah. create that filament again. There's been a Kickstarter in, uh, two years ago uh, of a guy, uh, and he tried uh, Daddy, I think it's called, uh, and it's called uh, uh, Filabot. So we invested in that, but he actually never. <laughs> he never <laughs> produced the Filabot. Well, <laughs> he did produce, but he never sent it. <laughs> yeah, it was too expensive to send. The, he was making too many pasts already. Oh goodness, too bad. Any and idea how the chewing is done? Yeah, yeah. There's a grinder inside. Um, with with tools or something. Yeah. Yeah. But he also thought but he could get the whole thing like done 10,000 is not... No, he <laughs> made a huge judgment in the amount of money he wanted to raise. Mm -hmm. Oh man. But he got 30. Oh, so it's, but it's, it's the, the like point was he thought it was cheaper? 
Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so ba too bad because it's such a good invention. Yeah, and actually he, he made the thing and then uh, he discovered that shipping it worldwide would cost him even more. So I sent him an email asking, okay, I'm, I'd be glad to put in a bit of extra money needed to ship it here. If only to demonstrate it in this place and inspire other people on, 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 on well, for, for, for picking it up and developing it further. But but can this be printed? Did he release design documents? Yeah. No. Not that I know. But I mean, that's a shame. I can imagine that large part of such a um, uh, machine can be somehow printed, or or is that difficult because uh, it is? Uh, well, it needs a lot. There's a lot of heat. The problem with a lot of this kind of machines is that it's very specialist. Uh, well, not exactly, but it's it's not as simple as a 3D printer. Yeah. Uh, basically, it, it's more on the level of the you have more parts of the level of the print head of a 3D printer, which is also a well a special made um, object with a lot of requirements. Yeah, and it's it's because quite heavy stuff because it has to crunch it all up. Yeah, it's a bit but, more industrial. But with a a moderate tool shop, you should be able to create this. Okay. And I have been thinking about it for a time. And there there are more designs of the yeah. same uh, idea in the competitions as well. Okay. Oh, so there are okay. So there, there are competitors. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Open source uh, open design. Yeah. I actually started with one. Never got further than the first test. Yeah. But it would be great to um, be able to expand this um, whole thing further by saying, okay, the materials have their own. Um, yep. Cycle. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That would be Be interesting. Because you have the eternal discussion about what, what use has 3D printing, and I think there are lots of uses for it. But I think it has to be incorporated in the whole design process. That if you make a product, and uh, you know you lose, uh, for example, I lose uh, a little button. Then I can print it because it's uh, te ten times more expensive to send it by post or something. You know. I actually, pr I had a, a Dell monitor yeah. and the power button yeah. broke loose. Yeah. And I looked at it. Well, that's a, a thin piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. So now I need a thin piece of plastic. And I looked in the waste box of the 3D printer, and there was one of the rafts mm -hmm. that was usable. So I. Uh, Got my cutters, cut out the right piece, uh, heated it uh, with a lighter, and pressed it down on the back of the button, and now the monitor works again. Okay. Fix is in there for two years now, and not broken loose since. So, well, you could say that the replacement part is 3D printed. Well, <laughs> and by the way, how how uh, because I know of. 3D printers, they say that uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's toxic, the, the air, it should be in an air, in an airy, in a windy place because it could be toxic if you are too much. Mm -hmm. well, I'll say like this, how, how, how environment, how environment is mentally friendly is the laser cutter. Are there, are there any experience with it? Is it uh, uh, ABS ABS printing? Uh, are you talking laser cutter or three printer? Yeah, the laser cutter. Okay, because it's a different. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but, I, but I do know it a bit from the three D printer, and the ABS fumes are not nice. At least mm -hmm. they might be even uh, harmful. I don't know that. But because the, yeah, well, when it's cutting, you smell it. Well, the, the fumes when that you get when you uh, cut the acrylic, yeah. etc., are 
quite nasty <laughs> to be around. Yeah. I don't know if they are really harmful, but it's not nice. It depends a lot if you want to create some toxic things, you can try cutting PVC. If you, well, that, yeah. that, that even damages your machine. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it but, but depends on what you're cutting. If you're cutting yeah. in your wood yeah. or uh, yeah. cardboard or paper, it would not be different from the fumes coming from, yeah. from uh, yeah, an oven. Yeah. But, but if you're cutting uh, plastic, it depends mm -hmm. entirely on the plastic. So yeah. PVC will eat chlorine mm -hmm. in the air, which will combine with the, uh, the, the water vapor in the air to chloric acid, and mm -hmm. that will ruin your machine. Oh, and you're yeah, right. But if you, well, probably won't get a retry because there will be metal in the way <laughs> in, this, in this machine. So you see that your machine uh, will uh, corrode mm -hmm. uh, really fast. Oh, okay. Uh, and all the other plastics, uh, depending on their composition, will give different kind of fumes that are not very nice. Mm -hmm. And so what you usually see is that there is a special air filter mm -hmm. with an active coal uh, filter substrate in. in Mm -hmm. And that uh, takes away well, the, 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 the bigger molecules from this vapor oh. uh, before releasing the rest into the air. Mm -hmm. um, and then these filters, you every so often have to well change and of course build them at the uh, at the proper uh, yeah, processing uh, company. Yeah. Uh, With here, he, he, you can just dump it in the ground. And here, the poor solution we have is, is well, barely a filter, and we just uh, blow it not inside this <laughs> room, but mm -hmm. uh, outside in the air. So okay. the next big improvement for our lab to make is to produce an open source uh, coal-based filter. Okay. Uh, because so I know that at the, the University of Twente, they are also doing. Uh, all kinds of um, research in uh, simple solutions for third world countries for uh, cleaning water and, and such things. And uh, I'm not completely now up to date how it is, but I had contact with some people from the University of Twente or, ba or, or Wageningen. <laughs> I'm not sure. And uh, uh, they are. Uh, Thinking of simple solutions, like that. Uh, mm -hmm. that uh, yeah, and there's also different um, schemes to, to actually clean the pollution, not like catch it in a filter, mm -hmm. but yeah. really get rid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and one is having uh, UV light that yeah. breaks down uh, complex organic molecules. Another one is having uh, a plasma mm -hmm. uh, cleaning it that will even uh, more aggressively uh, break down the, mm -hmm. the organic. Uh, because uh, wa water also uh, reverse osmosis, mm -hmm. you can actually filter out the clean water and just yeah. deposit the. Uh, yeah, but that, that would be like uh, uh, containing it and not no, it's, like it's, it's uh, actually uh, run, down. It's running off the dirty water. So you get uh, water in and get two streams of water yeah. out. Small yeah, but amount of clean yeah. water and yeah. dirty water you get out. Yeah. But but so yeah, that's you, you separate the yes, yes. solution in a separate uh, yeah, container. Yeah. But then, what to do with that? So how to <laughs> bury it <in> ground? Well, <laughs> so the best would be if you could uh, either extract valuable components of it or break it down in a yeah, yeah, in good manner. Yeah. Actively clean it. Actually. Yeah. Shall we? Uh, uh, yeah, I, for I forgot one, one thing actually. I'm um, uh, currently the, the physical is, is made with, with Java and, and runs on Jupyter, which has a couple of downsides. Uh, one of which is that I can sp I, I don't speak Java and I don't know a lot of people that, that speak Java or work with Java Swing. That's a bigger problem. Um, so I'm actually um, almost starting uh, this project, which is uh, a web-based version of Physica. Physica. So you can just go to uh, to the website that runs on, for example, the Raspberry Pi, and then you can uh, upload your design and press start. Did you make this? Part. Is this your uh, my design? Okay. This is just a uh, mock-up. The mock-up. Yeah. I saw the paper. Uh, thing was from this, right? Um. Oh, never mind. 
so yeah, this is this is. I hope I hope this is where it's, it's going. So that you don't need one program and you need don't need to ex import settings. Um, and you have a, a really handy place to share settings, so you can share what's a good setting for the for wood, for example. And that's that kind of stuff will become easier. And because it's it's all should be all web based, we'll have more people that can work on this. It's more common thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that, that's the end of my story. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, uh, Peter, uh, thank you for talking about the laser cutter. And uh, then uh, we will now uh, go to the Bitcoin ATM. Maybe it's a good idea to uh, have some drink, uh, a small break. So. And then uh, after that, we will. Uh, Bitcoin. Ultimate the balance sheet. Sure. Yeah.